All right, here we go with episode three. Let's take a look here. And um, we have our um, player phase, right? And so last we had Pethorn Alunabora, our elf, was injured from the mummy that came out of the um, little um, uh, Iron Maiden over here. And so we are going to heal our cells. We're going to cast his light mage um, wizard book uh, with uh, power of life where he's going to um, heal himself for two. That's going to be his player phase action. And uh, then we're going to try to uh, just kind of move. And I'm looking at this area here. We assume that there's going to be doors in here, um, possibly connecting doors. So we're going to come through here. Maybe we're going to split the party for a minute. We'll see how smart that is. <laughs> and open this door here and come down through here. So um, let's do that. We're going to take our cleric, who's going to move 12. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 8, 9, 10, 11, and 12. Beautiful. And then the dwarf is going to follow him. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12. Look at them apples, huh? Um, beautiful. And then the um, fighter's going to go next. 1, 2, 3, 4. Here we go. Now we are into the exploration phase. And so here we have um, discovered that there are indeed three doors have been here. Let's get that going. This guy and this dude over here, right? Beautiful. Here we go. Okay, so um, now we're gonna roll to see what is in the corridor. The uh, da -da 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 -da, passage features. Basically, since we already know what the uh, passage looks like and what's inside here, uh, it's just going to end up being, is there wandering monsters in here or not? So here we go. Rolling the bones, we came up with 11. Uh, that is nothing. All right, so we came through an empty hallway, and that um, is that. All right, so um, we could continue the exploration phase by opening up a door, and um, I just want to make every sh uh, sure that all of the heroes are staged so that when we open these doors, we uh, get there. Um, right, so we are going to um, skip on to the GM phase now. And um, what we have here is um, our solo GM phase table right up here. And um, so we are going to um, roll the dice here and see what's happening on the GM's phase because there's no monsters on the board. Um, one. All right, so it says draw a counter. All right, cool. So what we're going to do here is we're going to do this. And we're going to see what's happening. So we draw a counter. What do we come up with? A trap. All right, so we're gonna have to figure out who has sprung a trap. And um, we're gonna go, what is it? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12. Um, all right, so right here, the cleric coming back through here has, has uh, trapped, has stepped on some kind of trap mechanism. So we're gonna need to look that up and um, figure out um, what kind of a trap did he find? All right, so rooms or passages. Um, here we go. So we're going to roll this um, on here for trap stable. All right, 11. And 11 is, I'm going to need to read this here, <laughs> a spiked log out of the recesses of who knows where that came down from the ceiling. It is going to swing. Um, at him, and uh, let's take a look here. Though well, we need, we have an opportunity, right, to disarm it. Let me look at that, and then um, we're gonna come right back. <laughs> All right. So a spiked log comes out of the ceiling as we get close to the door and swings down on our unsuspecting heroes. Um, and so we have to um, roll below our speed right now, um, and or um, take seven dice of damage. So all right, so. Um, Casimir, the cleric, um, oh my goodness, you have a speed of five. Um, we need lower than five. Um, oof, six, you're gonna take your damage. And then, um, did the dwarf happen to get out of the way? You need to roll lower than four. Let's roll this guy, uh, five. Oof, both missed by one. Um, good enough though, that log comes out of the ceiling, swings down through, and seven dice of damage. All right, so we have, um, 
Um, seven dice of damage. Holy moly. Let's see how this works out. Whew. All right. So that log comes swooping down here out of the uh, out of the rafters um, at both of these uh, fellas. They are not able to get out of the way. Each has seven points of uh, or seven damage dice coming towards them. We're going to roll straight toughness rolls here. The toughness of 10 for um, Casimir. Let's just roll and see what we get here. So we need tens or better to hit him up. There's a critical damage. There's a damage. And that is it. So two. All right. So we're going to roll on the critical damage. See if there's another opportunity for more damage. No. All right. So he's going to take two damage there. And here we go. Um, beautiful. <laughs> now the uh, dwarf. Dwarf has a toughness of uh, six. Here we go. So sixes are better. Oh, Mr. Dwarf. Um, we got another damage. Another damage for that guy. That's damage. Oh no. Oh, yeah, he got absolutely hung up um, with that. He has six wounds total. And let's see, uh, he is a brute. So let's just see how many um, we are looking at here. So we know that we have one, two, three, four uh, damage. We're going to roll for the critical here. Um, and that wasn't all, that was it. So five points of damage. Oh my goodness gracious. So he gets just absolutely trounced by that log that comes down through and, um, oh man. So there we are. So the log is down and uh, the trap has been sprung and um, there we go. So that was a incredibly uh, dangerous GM phase right there. And um, man, we're gonna lick our wounds here a little bit and see what else we can do here. Let's uh, um, see if we can't pause a moment because we're gonna cycle back around to the player's phase again, right? And um, what do we have here? Um, all right, so we assessed the situation. We looked um, and um, the light wizard's spell from our elf up here, um, he has already used his healing spell. And um, so we are going to actually use a fate point, right, um, for our dwarf. I think it's a prudent this early on to use a fate point. Um, he's got that one fate point and he's gonna use it. And um, that's gonna eliminate all of that damage. Um, I think the uh, cleric is just gonna suck it up, but we're gonna save five damaged, um, five wounds um, on the dwarf for that one. So I think that's the best way to play that one. <laughs> so there we go. So, all right, so now player phase again. All right, so we are in position here on this side. Um, we are going to bring the elf now down um, into this zone here. We're gonna move the um, warrior over. Um, to here and um, so we are poised to do some exploration now we are going to simultaneously open these doors in a um, choreographed maneuver to find out what's in this room and here we go we're going to take this and we're rolling for dun, 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 dun. we know it's a room um, what kind of a room do we have here um, seven it is a hazard room all right so now we're going to roll on the hazard table to see what kind of a hazard room we definitely have in here. All right, so that is 15. If my math is correct. What do we have here? A magic circle is in here. All right, fantastic. So let me see what we got. One of those dudes hanging out. Okay, here we go. The magic circle has appeared in the room. We are going to come through. I think um, the elf and the warrior are content to just stay where they're at currently. The uh, dwarf is going to come in, and uh, the cleric is going to come in. Uh, speed of what? Um, are we looking at here? So five. Um, we're going to go through, right? So the cleric is, is going to be the one that's going to tempt fate, stepping on the magic circle. And when he does that, um, let us, let's find out what happens here. Um, nine. Uh, what that means is magical power. So um, if, a, if a wizard stands in the circle, he is filled with magical power. This allows him to cast his spell without any components. 
How about them apples, right? So um, he can um, cast a spell. Let's just see if he's got any kind of a, a thing that would be worth casting here at the moment. Um, Warrior Priest of Sigmar can cast a boon. Armor of the Righteous. Uh, oh, Hands of Healing. The Warrior Priest calls upon Sigmar to grant healing to one wounded in the fight against evil. The recipient's hands are restored, uh, the recipient's wounds are restored to maximum, and this may not be performed on a dead model. If the warrior priest is in the depths. Okay, so perfect. So we can lay hands upon on myself without using the, um, without using the uh, uh, spell components, right? And uh, using up that spell. So um, fantastic. He steps on there and is imbued with magic, heals himself, um, that way, perfect. And uh, then the glow in the magic circle just dissipates and goes away, it is used. So here we are. So now um, we have gotten to this point, right? I think we decided that we were just going to stay here. Um, I think we're gonna actually move the wizard and the elf down one because we're gonna open that door sort of next. And um, so with that, um, I think I can move my dwarf here. We're gonna move the dwarf up just a smidge to finish his movement. And uh, and so now we go into the GM phase. So now we're going to roll again. And where is my little dinner buttons? That is fantastic. All right, here we go. GM phase coming up. And we're gonna roll the dice to see what happens. One, it's another draw counter. Oh my goodness. There we go. Let's see what happens. And then we have here um, an ambush. All right, so with the ambush tokens, um, what happens there is uh, play at the start of the first upcoming combat turn. So next time we um, get uh, a monster situation happening, they're going to be joined. So we're just going to put that up there to kind of keep that um, sort of in our... Uh, field of view so that we don't forget it. Um, ambush is coming along with the next group of monsters, so we'll see how that goes. All right, GM phase is done. Player phase is happening. We're going to go ahead and um, Dwarf's going to walk out. The Cleric's going to walk up, and here we are. That is our player phase. And then we're going to go through the exploration phase. We're going to open this door and kind of see what's in there. So here we go. And um, open that door. It's a room table. Come on. Seven. Seven. Oh, man. It's another hazard room. So let's roll on the hazard table and see what we got this time. All right. We have 12 as our roll. And that, my friends, is a great. So there's a great in this room. We'll set that up and we'll be right back. Okay, so we opened the door. We discovered that there's a grate in this room, and um, we are gonna go ahead and um, peer in there. So our trusted cleric, <laughs> two, three, four, five, is going to come in here and peer in. And so what we can do right then is we can look in there and we can see um, what below. There's a, we can see that there's a room underneath this grate. And uh, so we are going to, this is a room now that is between the levels, right? So if a hero would move to the square, you can see that beneath the grate, there's a room. This should be rolled up on the room type table and uh, in the normal way. The room is between the dungeon levels and it has no other exits unless the uh, quest uh, specifies this. The shattered amulet, da 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 never mind, we don't need to know about that. And so if there are monsters in the room, they are prisoners of the powers holding the dungeon. They're accused of cowardice. There are no special types uh, uh, amongst prisoners. Use the total number of monsters generated. Okay, we got that. All right, perfect. So now, well, let's roll up our room again, um, room table, and see what's in there. Number one, uh, it's a normal room. So there is a, underneath there, is a normal everyday room. So, I, you know, I don't think we need to uh, investigate it, but, uh, there it is. So we look down there, there's an empty room um, in the grate. Um, all right, so that 
was thrilling. So, uh, so that was our expira uh, exploration phase, right? And so now we are um, back to the GM phase. Okay, so here we go. So we're gonna roll for the GM phase. And um, let's see what we do, what happens this time. Rolled an 11, and that means nothing happens this time around. All right, so perfect. So now we are on to the player phase. And so this time we're gonna stack up here on this door and um, get some tight quarters that we're moving to. All right, perfect. So here we are. And we're gonna open this door and we'll figure out what kind of room that is. Uh, 12, oh yeah, look at that. 12 uh, for the room type um is that's our quest room folks we have found some stairs going down and this is uh gonna get um, a little bit hairy in here so let's uh we'll get this whole set up but we've found the quest room and there's an ambush coming with that <laughs> okay so here we go we have found the quest room these are the stairs going down to the uh, catacombs. This is exactly what we were looking for now. Um, we unfortunately didn't uncover any caskets, any lair rooms um, to get the key to open up that, but we still have lots of uh, lair and dungeon left to search for that. And of course we could continue to search this dungeon for, for that and not go down the stairs. I suppose that's an option too. But uh, let's take a look here. So we have found the quest room. And so let's just do a quick little survey of the dungeon so far. And um, so we have come into the front doors here and um, come along through here, searched these rooms, came back through here, searched all through here, opened this door to find the stairs. That's exactly what we were looking for right there. So um, there was a grate here that had a room underneath, but was just a blank empty space and here we go. So now, now that we have the room open, we've got the stairs that we need. Now we're gonna roll on the chart to see what type of monsters um, are in this particular quest room um, for us. So we're going to give it a roll. Uh, come up with a six. So we have one white and four zombie. <laughs> okay, so we have um, opened the door. We've found the stairs going down for the um, for the quest room to uh, continue into the dungeon, down into the catacombs. Um, we're in a tight hallway here. We've got four zombies and a white in there. We also have the ambush token. Remember, we, we drew that. So we have to roll on that next. And those monsters are going to be coming in um, from that doorway right there. So we have definitely got our work cut out for us. So let's take a roll on the wandering monsters uh, table and see what comes up here. What are we gonna add to the mix? Uh, one, um, two more zombies are coming up. So we are going to do that. Um, holy moly. So um, just coming in here, just like that. Um, are you going to continue to um, Raid us, oh boy. All right, so, um, well, okay, so we do have um, sort of a advantage where we can kind of um, bog that doorway, right? And uh, kind of keep them at bay. So um, that is something that uh, we might do um, right now. So we're gonna start our combat phase and, uh, and then here we go. We're gonna roll initiative and then we'll be on to the fight. All right, here we go. So um, we're gonna do the dice with the white letters for the heroes, black heroes for the monsters for initiative. And oof, the monsters have uh, initiative and uh, they are gonna come through. So zombie number one is gonna step up and take a swing at the dwarf. And um, here he goes, weapon skill of six versus my weapon skill of nine. So he needs, Bum, bum, bum. Um, wow, he's gonna need a 10. So let's see if he, how he does eight. He misses um, right there. So he missed. And um, that, um, my friends, is uh, about all that can happen right now. So that is gonna be it. There's just a massive surge and uh, lots of groaning and monster um, uh, stuff happening. 
um, there. This is also a fearsome monster, so we're going to need to roll for fear for our dwarf and kind of see what happens. And the way we do that is we roll against bravery. So he needs to get um, a six, uh, right? Six or better. Eight. So he did it. Um, so he is not sh you know, shivering and pooping his pants and all that kind of stuff and chewing his hair <laughs> at the moment. So he's going to be good. So he is going to go ahead and take that pistol of his and he's going to attack that zombie. And so he needs, um, with his um, weapon skill of nine versus that weapon skill of six, um, he needs a four to hit that dude. And he does indeed hit it. And that uh, weapon does four damage. Ooh, he's got a critical hit, nothing. That's a hit. And that's a hit. All right, so that is enough. I'm not. Uh, I don't even think I need to roll. Um, yeah. So that that one missed for the critical. All right. So he did three damage. That is three wounds. So he has alleviated that zombie from the table. Um, fantastic. Um, with that, he's also going to fade back into the group so that he can reload. But he's gonna um, come back here, and um, we have we've kind of loosened up the group a little bit. But our um, ooh, I'm wondering, yay, if we should. Yes, the cleric has got to come in and cast a spell, right? So um, the cleric can move up. That's exactly what we're gonna do. So check this out. One, two, three. So the cleric is gonna step up right here. And I'm um, going to cast his spell. And the spell that he has prepared for our lovely undeads is a soul blast. The warrior priest casts, uh, calls upon Sigmar to smite his enemies. All models within two spaces, including excluding diagonal moves of the warrior, uh, automatically struck with two damage dice, right? Um, four damage dice are inflicted against undead or demons. All are undead. So it's four damage dice on each. And so we are doing, um, it's within two, right? So one, two. So it's all of these right in here. Going to get four damage dice. Uh, like so. All right. Wow, that is great. That's exactly what we needed to do. So, um, all right, let's... Let's take this guy first. Uh, four damage dice coming to him. And you've got uh, two. Uh, he's uh, toughness dun, 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 is four. All right, so two, right? Uh, there's a damage. There's a damage. And so he took, he took two points of damage um, right there. So we will mark that cat right there. He's uh, got one left. Um, all right, this next... Zombie up here is going to take his, and that's one, two, three, four. This guy is killed outright, um, just like so. That was two zombies that are, have been killed um, so far. All right, now we go one more zombie coming up. Um, one, two, three, ooh, and one is a crit. Um, so that is really enough to kill him. Let's just see. So Cleric just walks into this room, soul blasts and zombies are just exploding all over the room. Um, all right, now our white. The white is a little bit of a different character. That character has, dun, 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 dun. Um, here he has a toughness of five. Let's see how he fares. One damage, two damage, three damage. So that was three, right? Um, the white has three wounds as well, so. That definitely is a way to clear out the room. Hey, did that cleric go? All right, so um, we are uh, moving in the right direction all of a sudden. The uh, odds don't seem as uh, horrible as we thought they once were. <laughs> all right, so um, there we go. So now um, that is his move. Warrior is going to step up and uh, move in um, to here. And um, he's gonna go ahead and attack that zombie. And the warrior, um, let's see, the uh, da -da -da, knight, uh, weapon skill of nine, and um, he's going to attack the zombie weapon skill of six. Eight is definitely more than enough to hit. 
And then he is going to do his four dice damage with that fancy sword. Let's see how he does. Ooh, critical here. And then um, one damage, two damage. Oh yeah, he just comes right in and uh, that critical damage and pretty much cuts that zombie right in half. The dice are loving us tonight. So we are <laughs> moving in the right direction. Okay, uh, next on our, um, on our agenda, is the elf. Elf's gonna come through, one, two, three, four, five. Okay, he is gonna come right up here. He has a speed, right, of four. He can't get there. Um, so he's gonna be right here, and he's just going to um, hang out there. Okay, so that is um, where we are, and now the uh, monsters get their turn um, to go. So we're gonna have this guy step up, Maybe I should have had the elf not step into the room just yet. <laughs> Zombie's gonna step through the door, take a swing at the elf. The elf has a weapon skill of 10. So, ooh, 10, what did he need? The zombie was rolling a, um, against, weapon skill 10, and he has a weapon skill six. So he needs to get, uh, ooh, he hit. Um, so he hit the elf, and the, that character is counts as a sword. Four damage dice as he's coming through. Um, all right, so the elf's toughness is four currently. So there's a hit. Miss. That's a critical miss, right? That's a hit. It's a good thing he healed himself earlier. I reckon, oof. And, oh no, um, that took him right back down to zero. Um, okay, so here we go. Uh, didn't use fate before, so we are definitely going to be using our uh, fate. Um, this time, all of that damage is going to be reversed. So the elf utilizes his fate, dwarf has used his fate, we still have um, the knight and the cleric with their fate points there. So uh, that's that. All right, this zombie's gonna come up here and attack the cleric um, with a nine. And then let's see, the uh, weapon skill of eight. Um, let's see where we at. Six versus eight, right? Uh, nine, ooh, he hit him. And um, so let's take a look. Um, he's got a five toughness of 10. So he's got his work cut out for him to try to get through the cleric. Oh, he does. He does with some critical damage. And see if there, so uh, Cleric takes a uh, point of damage um, on that hardy dude. All right, here we go. All right, so now it is the character's turn. Um, Dwarf is going to reload his weapon. That's gonna be his turn for the player's turn. The um, knight is gonna go ahead and attack. Um, here, 10 definitely hits. Rolling against toughness, oh, critical. One, two, three, three damage plus the critical, another damage uh, easily slays the zombie. There we go. Oof, man, what a battle. Okay, um, cleric stepping up, hitting the guy on the stairs. Oh, and critical hit. Fan flipping tastic. So, um, all right, that is automatically going to just crush this guy. Oh, we're just gonna roll it all out. And this guy's dead. So, um, uh, dead as well. Whew. Holy bull, he only needed one uh, damage anyway to, to finish him out. Oh boy, so we did it. We got through it. Um, we're gonna calculate the um, uh, we're going to calculate the gold and the treasure that we've won from this, and I'll uh, we'll recap that on the next episode, and our heroes are going to go down the stairs, and we're now uh, finally into the last, the, the beginning parts of the catacomb where we start to um, do modular dungeon. So this is just kind of a good example of how you can kind of run an, exam uh, 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 an AHQ adventure in a map that's already put together like this. So I think it's uh, working out just uh, fantastically. Love to hear what your thoughts are on it. And um, uh, it's been great fun so far. So lots of, uh, lots of things going on, lots of discoveries happening. And um, let me know what you think. 
and uh, stay tuned for episode four.